Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be continuing the series on cryptocurrency and Binance. If you'll remember, I started recording this series on Binance uh, around Memorial Day weekend, and I didn't post the videos because I wasn't finished. Uh, I got a little bit bummed out after what happened after Memorial Day and um, everything that happened in the country for the past a uh, little over a month now. Uh, so I got a little bit burnt out and wasn't quite in the mood to uh, continue the series. But now that I'm uh, in a little bit better spirits, I'm going to try and pick up where we left off here. Uh, since there's a lot of demand for uh, crypto content, I'm going to uh, post a little bit more of that on this particular channel. Um, so if you'll remember, um, last time we had started making uh, this uh, UI. So uh, the plan was to make kind of a trading view like a system where we have a user interface that has a chart and some indicators on this user interface. And then we also um, explored um, receiving uh, candlestick data using the Binance API and also um, uh, explored using WebSockets to stream uh, real-time data, both from JavaScript and also uh, from Python. And so uh, then after that, uh, we explored using TALib. So we installed TALib in order to uh, try different indicators against the candlestick uh, candlesticks that we got uh, so that we can tell whether uh, the price for Bitcoin is overbought or oversold as just a simple example. So now what we want to do, now that we have this UI and also we have you know, some simple scripts to um, parse CSV data with 15 minute candlesticks and you know, run a TALib RSI indicator, for instance, on um, this data set, um, I want to start hooking up a backend to this web UI. So we have a web UI that's written in JavaScript and we have the ability to stream uh, Bitcoin price data uh, to the console, and I believe we showed that last time. So uh, that's all inside of an index.html file. Uh, so we included lightweight charts. Uh, we included these uh, simple text fields for our RSI settings. And then also we have this chart.js that we wrote, which is a JavaScript file that uh, configures our charts. And right now we just have hard-coded uh, price data to demonstrate the chart. Um, and we also know how to uh, stream Binance data over WebSockets uh, using JavaScript. So we showed how to do that. And so now let's let's start hooking up this front end to a back end that gets uh, real data and kind of tie it all together. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to introduce a framework called Flask. So a lot of people that program Python are probably familiar with this. It's a web framework that makes it very easy to um, make a little web application. And so you can build uh, a front end using these HTML templates with some placeholders for variables. And then you can also define some API endpoints and routes to uh, run some logic, access a database, call other services and things like that. And so we're going to use Flask here and hook that up. So to do that, uh, let's go ahead and just dive in. So we have our requ requirements.txt here. And I've already installed Python, Binance, TALib, NumPy, and Backtrader. And I'm going to add Flask as a requirement here. And so we can just install Flask um, into our virtual environment here. And then we'll have uh, Flask as a web application framework. And then let's just copy the quick start example to uh, create a, a Flask app. And I'll demonstrate how that works. And then we'll start filling in uh, the simple endpoints with more specific ones for our application. So here's the minimal application in the quick start section of the Flask documentation. And so if you just copy this in, let's create a new file. And we're going to call it app.py. And this will contain our web application. If I paste that in, you'll see we import Flask uh, from the Flask uh, package. And then the first thing you need to do is you create a new application, which is a new Flask object. And then all you need to do in Flask really is to find some routes and then some function, a function to call when that route is accessed in the browser. Um, and if you don't know what that means, I'm going to show you real quick. So let's run this Flask application. Um, so it looks like you have to export a variable, an environment variable. So this export Flask app equals hello.py. So we're going to export from our command line, export Flask app equals. And then our app is called app.py. So we'll say app.py. And that creates the environment variable. And then we just say flask run. And what you'll see that happens is a, a small web server. It has a web server built in. And it says the web server is running on localhost 127.001 and port 5000. So if you copy that to your browser 
and you put that in, you get hello world on the screen. So you have a web address and at the base route, which is just slash, right? Um, it just returns hello world. That's all it does. So this is the route and uh, the function. It means when this route is accessed in the browser, it calls this function hello world. And whatever you return from the function is what's displayed, uh, rendered in the browser as a response. So uh, let's modify this a little bit uh, with another example. So instead of hello world, let's just call this the index. And then I'll just call this uh, the index page, right? And so if I rerun it, I'll rerun the app um, and I reload, you see it just returns index. So that's how you change that, right? And then let's say we wanted to create another route that where the, the URL is slash by. So maybe it's a by endpoint. So let's call that function by and we'll return the string by and let's create one called cell and we'll create that function and then return cell and let's create one more function called settings where we can just save our uh, indicator settings to a database for instance. So I'll call that one settings, right? And let's do that, okay? And then another thing we'll do, you'll notice I had to restart the web server uh, in order for the changes to take effect. This web server actually uh, can automatically reload if you uh, set the debug mode on. And so let's see how you do that. So debug mode, all you have to do is do another export and say you're in development mode. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna stop this web server with control C and I'm gonna export that flask environment equals development and then do run. And you'll see now it says debugger is active. And so what that means is uh, it will reload the application automatically. So let me show you what that means. So uh, you see we defined a base route that's index, but also now we have a slash by. So slash by returns by, slash cell returns cell, and slash settings returns settings, right? And so if I change this, for instance, to settings two now, I don't have to reload the server. You see how it reloaded automatically. And so now I'll get a 404 not found when I hit settings because I changed the route to settings two. But if I go to settings two, I automatically see it. So I'll change that back. I just want to show you how that reloads automatically. And also note in debug mode, if I make a mistake, so let's say uh, my homepage, I leave that out like that and it tries to reload. And then I try to hit my endpoint the base URL here, I see a syntax error. So it shows me some debugging information in the browser to help me know when where the error is. So it says end of line scanning string literal and it points to that exact point. So I just took out the quote there. So that's the error. So now it reloads and now if I reload it, everything's fine. So that's good. All right, so we're not just gonna be returning a simple string, right? What we really want it to do is we want it to look like this. We want to have a chart. We want to have you know a user interface. So we already have this index.html uh, file created. And so what we want to do is use that in our Flask application. So to do that, we're going to want to use uh, Flask templates, which are Jinja 2 templates. And so if you look in the documentation here for Jinja, right? So all these are, are basic, basically some HTML like this but it has some nice syntax for like looping through a list, uh, some placeholders, like if you wanna change the title. And so there's a bunch of different tags that you can embed in. So it just basically is a templating language that we use. Uh, but the baseline, it's really just some HTML, but with ways of looping through Python lists and displaying uh, variables dynamically and so forth. So it's like some HTML with, with an extra layer of programming on top of it. So what we can do is this index.html that we had saved in the previous uh, lesson, right? All that was is uh, we had been opening this as a file, but we don't wanna actually open it as a file. We want this to run as a web application, right? So that we can deploy this to some uh, domain, our own domain, and then have this uh, template load and display our UI. So um, in Flask, what you wanna do is you can create a folder called templates, just like that. And then we want all of our Flask templates, our Jinja templates to go in this templates folder. And so let's move. So I'm gonna move index.html um, to this templates folder. So I move that there and then inside of templates, now I have that index.html. 
and then our chart.js, we can also, we're going to make an, another directory, and I'm going to create a directory called, in the base, called static, and that'll just be our static JavaScript and CSS files. And so I'll move chart.js to static, and that's in there. And so now we're getting the structure of an application. We have our JavaScript and CSS and static. We have our HTML templates in templates. Um, we'll probably make a data directory. So let's make a data directory just in case we need these CSV files later. So we'll make a directory called data. And let's just move our CSV files into there. And we're just going to gradually organize our application more and more. Right? So data has some CSV files that we downloaded. Uh, we probably don't need these later. We're going to obtain these dynamically, but I'm just saving them for now. So we have our app. We have our backtrader TA lib. So I, I have this prepared for later, uh, but we're not going to go into this quite yet. We're going to make some modifications to this. Um, and then we have our TA.py that we ran earlier. And so any Python code we have here, we're going to gradually add that into uh, to modules and then pull them into our web application here. So import them in and then make it where these endpoints actually call the technical analysis functions from TA lib um, and also call the Binance API. Um, and let me see this data set text here. I'll go ahead and move that also into data. So I'll do that. And then, yeah, so we're gonna clean this up more and more so that our, our project is well organized into a structure. We just started with the basic HTML file um, and some simple Python scripts, but we're gonna organize this into a full stack web ap application. All right, so here's our app. And then we have an index now, an index function that returns the string index. But we want, what we wanna do is actually uh, display a template, an HTML template. So to do that, uh, Flask has this render template function. So I'm gonna from Flask import Flask and render template, and this is all in the documentation, uh, but I have enough familiarity where I know the names of these now. So uh, we're importing render template, and we're gonna say uh, return render template index.html, and I believe it'll automatically know to look in a folder called templates, so let's see what happens. So I'm gonna reload this, um, and I'm gonna do flask run to run the server again. And you'll see, right, it rendered the index.html template that we had. So you'll notice we have the HTML part from our index uh, template here, but we don't have our chart anymore in any color or anything like that. So what happened there, right? We did, we have this template rendering, uh, but this chart.js is in a different location now, and our application doesn't know where it's at. So to fix that, uh, we're going to go back here to the Flask Quick Start here. Um, and I believe there's a static, yeah, so there's a static files um, function here. And so we need this little URL for to generate a, a URL to a particular asset. So a, a CSS or JavaScript file. And so if we copy this where it's a script source equals chart.js, um, instead of putting just chart, start chart.js just like that, what we need to do is do these little placeholders here. And then we're, we're calling this function URL4 and saying look in static for a file name chart.js. And then at that point, no matter where we deploy it, when we refresh it, um, it will have a way to reference that static. So it does slash static chart.js. But if we had uh, this in another folder and defined our static folder, then it would know where that chart.js lives. All right, so now we have our JavaScript, we have our UI, and it's being rendered as a template in uh, inside of Flask. All right, so the next step here um, is what were those little curly braces I just used? So that's used to display a variable um, in Flask or in Jinja 2 templates. And so what we can do is, for instance, let's say we want to change the title of this application. We could do uh, title equals coin view. So we define a variable in our Python function, and then we just pass these variables. Um, so we can do title equals title, and that will go to our template here. Instead of hard coding trades here, we can do this placeholder and just do title just like that. And you'll see it says coin view. And so if we want to save settings to a database, for instance, um, like this 14, 70, and 30, then what we could do is when the page loads, we retrieve those default settings from the database. 
and then we send them over to the template and then display them in the template. That way different users of this application could have different settings of their own. All right, so we're coming up at about 15 minutes here on this video. So I'm pretty happy with what we've accomplished. We took our uh, fixed HTML file that we created in the earlier lessons and we installed Flask and used it in, as a template uh, for our Flask application. And we've also defined some simple routes even though they don't have much logic in them yet. So I'm gonna stop the video here. In the next video, I'm gonna continue on and add some logic to actually inter interact with cryptocurrency data and Binance API uh, from Flask uh, and so we'll grab Actually start hooking up our front and back end and bring it all together into a full stack application. All right, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video.